I'm a bioarchaeologist, which means I study human skeletal remains from archaeological sites. And first, human remains encode an enormous amount of information about life in the past and what it was like. Uh, there's information about the identities of people uh, in terms of their age or their sex and lived experiences such as disease or diet or trauma. Second, human remains are enormously culturally meaningful around the world. They're always important. And so it's especially key for archeologists to be able to identify them when they're excavating so that they can treat them with the sensitivity and respect um, that they necessitate. So being able to tell whether something is a goat bone or a human bone uh, changes how you treat it and obviously how you interpret it. So it's a key skill for archeologists. This is a, a methods focused course. So by the end of the class, students are going to be able to come away from it, knowing how to differentiate human bones and non-human bones. So human versus animal remains. Uh, was this a sheep or was this a human child, for example? They'll also be able to identify particular elements. Was this a bone from the upper limb, a bone from the lower limb, a bone from the wrist, a bone from the ankle? And so they'll really learn uh, most of the over 200 bones in the human body in a high level of detail and be able to recognize them. Uh, we'll also be able to assess or estimate age and sex based on human remains. So did these bones belong to a child or someone who is fully uh, grown and matured? There will also be sessions towards the end of the course where we talk about things like pathology or paleopathology, the study of ancient disease, and taphonomy, the site formation processes that can affect how bones are preserved. So were there animals that were gnawing on the bones? Were they buried in a wet environment versus a dry environment? Those kinds of questions. And these sorts of skills are obviously useful for archeologists who may encounter human remains in the field, but they're also useful for students who may be um, bringing in some aspect of human anatomy into their future careers. So students who wanna go into medicine, who wanna go into kinesiology, who want to go into physical therapy. This course will provide a really solid grounding in human skeletal anatomy for its students. We're going to have time that's pretty evenly divided between lectures and more hands-on lab or practical components to the course. So in the first half of the course, typically at the beginning of the week, I'll give a lecture introducing the skeletal elements we're going to learn about. And then the second half of the week, we're going to be spending time in the Peabody uh, working with human remains, learning how to identify them, side them, uh, and sketching them for the bone notebooks, which are sketch books that students will compile of some of the major uh, elements as a key part of their grade in this course. The second half of the course, we're going to focus more on some standard bioarchaeological techniques for doing things like estimating the age of subadults or individuals who are younger than about 18 years of age and adults and also estimating sex and learning about things like pathology, trauma, taphonomy, et cetera. So it's going to be pretty evenly divided between lecture and then a more hands-on component um, where students are really going to be proactively learning how to identify uh, human remains. I'm gonna draw heavily on my own research uh, for some of the problems that we'll be talking about in this class. So for example, Let's say you're a bioarchaeologist and you're working with a site that has been salvage excavated. So it's excavated in advance of say, the construction of uh, a new public park or a shopping mall. And what you are presented with is a series of, or an assemblage of very, very fragmentary, mixed up bits of bones and teeth. Uh, so during my dissertation research, for example, I had a particular assemblage that was over 3,000 human teeth. And so how do you take something like that, something that's very fragmentary and mixed up, and make assertions about what life was like in the past or the people that are represented by this assemblage? Uh, at first glance, it might seem an impossible um, kind of Sisyphean task to untangle these sorts of archeological assemblages, but it's a common problem when human remains are salvage excavated. How do you treat them in a way that is meaningful, that recognizes the humanity of these peoples or of these people, and that tells us something about what was like what life was like even thousands of years ago. So we'll learn how, hopefully, to do things like that. 
Uh, the division in terms of how students are going to be graded is about 20% engagement because it's a very hands-on class. So knowing that students are there, they're engaged, they're participating. 15% of the grade will come from quizzes. There are six quizzes over the course of the, uh, of the class and they're meant to prepare students for the larger assessments. Uh, and then there's also going to be a bone notebook, which is worth about 15% of the grade. And what this is, is a sketch notebook where students are going to sketch out particular bones and landmarks and write down their tips and tricks for identifying and citing them. And most osteologists and bioarchaeologists that I know have one of these notebooks, sometimes that they have been uh, toting around with them since their undergraduate years. So they're very helpful as a kind of repository of information and personalized information about how to do osteology. Uh, the larger assessments, there'll be two of them, uh, one in the middle of the class, one at the end of the class, and these are going to be exam style assessments, but we'll have built in preparation for them uh, with some of the quizzes. And there's also going to be open review periods before each of the assessments.